Um, we know in Brussels um, how the uh, work of the Institute as a thought leader in, in politics and, and international relations is um, impressive and, uh, and therefore it's a great honor for me to be, to be here. Um, I'm a member of the judiciary, but I'm not here to share with you um, legal comments. I have two basic messages for you today. The first one is um, we cannot approach the challenges of the future with the tools of the past. And the second one is new rules to harmonize the European Union legal framework are needed, but much more is, uh, is needed um, outside the legal, the legal dimension. But let me start with, with a personal um, comment uh, to say that I had the honor to be in the business of regulating data protection uh, processing for over 20 years as academic, uh, part of full-time, as a regulator, enforcer, and, and now at the, EU, at the EU level. And I had the unique privilege to, to be part of different generations of data protection uh, approaches. Uh, and, and this is why what I'm saying uh, builds on, on the basis of this, uh, of this experience. For most of this time, so more than 20 years, data protection has been treated as more as a technical uh, abstraction. Uh, therefore, on the margin of political discourse. Uh, yesterday, I'm sure you would like to speak about this judgment, a ruling by the European Union uh, Court of Justice on a case concerning the very well-known um, Commission decision, perhaps less known in, uh, in legal details, but the safe harbor, I mean, data sharing, um, made uh, headlines in uh, every major news uh, outlet around, around the world. Um, I don't recall EU uh, data protection ever commanding uh, such a level of global uh, attention. So the, the timing and also location of this discussion is, uh, is more than, than impeccable. I'm convinced that we are now at the crossroad, a point in time where low technology and public opinion seem to converge uh, around a set of core principles and, and, and values. Um, I will not introduce this discussion um, with uh, detailed comments about, about Safe Harbor, uh, but uh, let me say that I suspect that uh, for many of you uh, the judgment was not a big, uh, a big surprise. The Schrem case uh, needs to be situated in the distinct circle of jurisprudence which uh, has put living uh, flesh on the sturdy skeleton of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Legislators, governments, businesses and citizens can be no doubt about the rights of privacy and uh, to data protection are important and can be ignored. And, and please do not read the judgment uh, alone. Two other important cases uh, are to be considered. They come from two judgments uh, released last week, um, the Beltimo and, and the Barra cases, focusing on transparency, focusing on uh, the challenge to ensure proximity um, and protection to citizens in, in a globalized, uh, globalized world. But I'd like to touch mainly on uh, three aspects of the digital ethics which we want to uh, promote at the European uh, Data Protection uh, Supervisor. This is why I have adopted an opinion uh, in, in September before traveling uh, to the Silicon Valley. And some of the comments I'm, I'm making now builds on the uh, observations uh, and, and the impressions I had coming, coming back. The first uh, comment is, what is the ethical dimension to data processing and why is it important? The second one is what might a digital ethics would look like? And the third one is how do we build a consensus to get, to get there? Um, but let me, <clears throat> to explain why we're speaking the ethical dimension, let me begin with a very brief overview of the institution I, I represent. I lead a very a uh, small institution uh, currently composed of no more than 50 employees. Uh, we are likely to grow because of the, of the reform. 
And like the organization uh, which uh, Ellen Dixon uh, here in the audience leads, we are an independent uh, uh, data protection authority. So we are part of the group of regulators, but we are, um, I mean, uh, an independent institution. We are responsible under the European Union uh, law specific regulation adopted in 2001 for monitoring uh, and enforcing compliance um, around the, the processing of personal data by all the European Union um, offices, um, bodies, agencies, uh, main and small entities uh, in included. For instance, uh, the local agency which is established here in, uh, in Ireland. But we, we are increasingly responsible for advising EU institutions, particularly Council, uh, Commission and, and Parliament on all matters concerning the processing of personal data. More specifically, uh, we have to ensure that when uh, introducing soft and, and hard legislation, they take on board uh, existing data protection uh, principles. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we have been, my colleague and I, uh, appointed in December last year with the specific remit of being constructive and, and, and proactive. And this is why in uh, 88 days, this was our priority, we published in, uh, in March this year a five-year strategy uh, with our vision for the EU to be a beacon of best practice and forward thinking for how people and, and information about them should be treated with respect and accountability in the digital society. We would like my colleague and I to be transparent, predictable, and, and we would like to be evaluated in five years from now on the basis of objective key performance indicators about the, the results we will, uh, we will achieve. This allows me to come back to, to the main um, takeaway of my today's contribution. What is the ethical dimension to data processing and why uh, is it important? Um, as with the 18th and uh, <clears throat> the 19th century, industrial uh, revolution, uh, revolution and, and the genesis of the human rights movement, uh, there is, in my view, a similar imperative, imper um, imperative now against the big data uh, to safeguard dignity in the digital uh, revolution. Um, dignity was present in uh, the Treaty of Rome as amended in, in Amsterdam and, and Maastricht, but now in, in the Lisbon Treaty is placed in a very different place. Uh, it has been upgraded Dignity is considered by many as one of the fundamental rights and freedoms, but law professors may say that it's not exactly uh, a right or, or a freedom, it's something more. Fundamental rights and freedoms uh, may be subject to interferences, which has to be necessary and proportionate in a democratic society to preserve or promote other fundamental rights and, and public interest. But the Lisbon Treaty doesn't speak about any interference on human, on human dignity. Um, and we would like to reflect on, on, on this. So we know that uh, ethics is uh, an established factor in, uh, in medicine um, and is also driving notions of uh, corporate social responsibility, environmental responsibility towards future uh, generation. And my sense is that scientists uh, and interpreters are, are realizing that the explosion of personal information and powers of, of computer, artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality, raise now um, more profound questions about what it will mean to be human uh, in, in the future, what it will mean respect for, for the individuals, who will be responsible and, li and liable for decisions which will affect people in the daily life, where we would like to be everywhere, ubiquitous computing, by using uh, similar platforms, uh, similar devices. Even the Pope, Pope Francis, has written about the so-called mental pollution uh, of the mere accumulation of a data divorced from a genuine human exchange and self-reflection. Uh, self so in practical terms, um, I see now uh, in closed services where uh, there is a general 
reluctance uh, for uh, anyone to take responsibility for what happens to the data, nobody wants to hold the encryption keys. And many data controllers claim uh, they simply don't know where the data is. Surveillance is the business model of the internet. But most people have not subscribed to this. The European Union now is approaching a new strategy concerning the digital single market. And some players uh, seem to be tempted to impose, import the West Coast approach, where there is no principle of data minimization or purpose limitation, where any obstacle to data flows uh, are considered bad for innovation. And meanwhile, there is a sort of a security ratchet where uh, it is now assumed that law enforcement and the security services to keep pace with terrorists and uh, cyber criminals must simply collect, store uh, indefinitely and indiscriminately all data available. We see this with data retention. We see it now with, with PNR, which will be subject tomorrow of uh, an important meeting of the European Council in Brussels. Security, uh, which uh, used to be a concept closely to, uh, connected to, to privacy, sin Sinecura, is now deliberately left uh, value, value and, and undefined, so that it can be used to justify more and more intrusions uh, into the private lives of more and more uh, people. So in my view, an ethical approach uh, looks at the longer term uh, implications for society and the individuals um, of this trend and, and seeks to identify new norms to prevent unintended consequences. But what might uh, a digital ethics look like? Um, the EDPS 2015 uh, opinion on the ethical dimension outline what we call a big data protection, data protection ecosystem, sort of an interdependency consistent, consisting of uh, regulation, businesses, and organizations processing information, engineers, designers, um, and also individuals and self. So it, it was a recognition that good laws uh, are, as said, necessary, but unfortunately insufficient. So controllers need, uh, in our view, to be aware and much more accountable for, what, for the impact of their business decisions on, on individuals. Let's think for a second to the Google Spain judgment of, of last year. Um, Google were not providing a public or charitable uh, service. They were making business decisions through their algorithms. They are driven by legitimate uh, business interest. And these legitimate interests can be considered, of course, but they cannot take precedence over the fundamental rights of the individuals concerned of, uh, by, by the data, including the right to be, to be informed. So technology, uh, in a nutshell, is not uh, value neutral. It is the result, in my view, of human ingenuity, um, reflective of the value system of those men and, and, and women. It is uh, only now that people are beginning to realize the uh, pre-science of Lawrence Lessig declaration around 15 years ago that code is law. In other words, that the rules and standards which are devised to govern um, cyberspace like the anonymity or traceability of, of individuals are at least as powerful as the formal legal framework applied by, by the court. The problem is that the internet which has um, emerged was devised by uh, brilliant designers, scientists, technicians, who did not necessarily um, understand or, or reflect or, or translate into practice on fundamental values uh, like human dignity, privacy, and, and, and freedom of expression. So we are starting to change that by bringing together uh, legal experts and, and engineers um, it will be crucial uh, to the long term um, an exercise in terms of sustainability and competitiveness of the digital single market in, in the EU. Our motto is that not everything which is uh, technically feasible is as such morally uh, tenable. So we are thinking on how we can um, 
introduce more transparency, how we can empower uh, more individuals uh, in a world where we would like to not slow down um, information and, and innovation, but to allow people to be more in control of their uh, information. We would like to see people treated more as individual, as human beings, and less as users, consumers, subscribers. People are prosumers of content online. And therefore, structures uh, must be in place to address power and information imbalances. But how do we build a consensus to, to get there? Uh, we aim to uh, simply give um, a kickstart by pulling together um, data protection um, ethics advisory board uh, at our institution. Uh, this panel will, uh, will operate uh, transparently, uh, will be a resource for the EU generally, and will include visionaries from outside the, the data protection community. I really count to, to have a preliminary result in no more than uh, one year and a half, and to organize an international event in, in 2017 to enlarge the, uh, the discussion. Data protection authorities uh, will play an important but not exclusive um, role in, uh, in this area because they, they will have more resources, of, of course, they will have more, more expertise. Um, therefore, we have to protect more their accountability, their independence, their, their transparency, and encourage their capacity for forward thinking uh, to, to, be, to be announced. Therefore, we have to speak more as uh, data protection authorities with one voice, um, and we must be free as uh, data protection authorities for unnecessary prescriptive uh, procedures. Uh, we are insisting a lot to debureaucratize as much as possible requirements in the reform. We, we think that flexibility is needed in terms of formalities, uh, stop to the bureau privacy, uh, let's make a distinction in between safeguards to be implemented in an innovative way and uh, a formal prerequisite which are not necessarily essential uh, uh, as such. And on a global scale, we need of uh, partnership at international level. Therefore, we need to build bridges with other regions and countries where they, perhaps they have a different approach but values are, uh, are shared. Um, of course, this week the focus is largely on EU and US. Uh, one commentator on The Guardian on Wednesday said the Atlantic just got, uh, got wider. But in fact, uh, we still uh, have a great deal uh, in, uh, in common. US is still a strategic partner for, for the EU. And therefore, um, I think uh, building now on this important uh, judgment, I think we we should start uh, with a, a new process, which could be a platform for the rest of the world. I counted weeks ago over 120 countries um, with data protection laws. Um, and, and therefore, Europe is uh, leading by example, but we are a minority. At the same time, they are following more the European approach, not in terms of an omnibus law, but in terms of approach to the protection of, uh, of individuals. So this is uh, more or less the, the, the challenge, and therefore it's simply a pleasure to look forward uh, for our discussion, and I thank you for your attention.